Okay, today uh, let's test the step-by-step -step approach with both Composer and Windsurf. We can actually uh, do this with both, but as far as I know, Windsurf doesn't have a .cursor rules file or anything like that, but we can um, overcome that. If you can see the new agent right here, it says normal and agent. You can switch between them in the beginning. However, uh, let's start with a new uh, .cursor rules file. Uh, and here we can just essentially specify steps. We can, we can say step one. Uh, let's make this simple at first. And let's say a file with four basic math functions. And then let's say step two. So step two is going to be, I guess it doesn't have to be uh, case sensitive. Uh, okay, we can say add four calculus functions, right? And now we can say step three, convert this to OOP, object-oriented programming, okay. So we can do something like this. Normally, when you're building a project, you can actually build the steps one by one too. But maybe you had your idea, you wanted something like this. Uh, and now we can just come over to the composer, the normal composer, and say, please implement. We can say, please implement all steps or please implement it in full. But we're going to, but the beauty of this is the iterative approach. So we can say, please implement step one. Uh, and we will see that it's going to go ahead and only implement step one. See, add, subtract, multiply, and divide. Here we go, our basic math is was created only with only four functions. So let's accept this. So this is, this is pretty much the beauty of it. Then we can say now, please implement step two. And it should go ahead and uh, add the calculus functions. See, it says I'll add four calculus functions. If you were if you were even building the dot cursor rules file from scratch, you can actually build the steps one by one too. And then at the very end, we can say implement step three. We haven't asked this yet, but once this is done, as you can see, it doesn't use object-oriented programming yet. But as you can see, it's automatically using term color. That is because I have in my settings uh, Cursor rules, rules for AI here. And the first thing is have term color printing every step of the way. Uh, so that's why it's actually, so did my general, uh, the, the kind of general instructions that I will be using in every project is in here, rules for AI. And I use that cursor rules for more uh, nuanced steps or project specific steps. So you can say implement step three. And now it should convert everything to uh, object-oriented programming with a class, and it is doing that. Okay, so this is beautiful, but I mean, it doesn't stop here, right? You can actually cancel this because it's doing it. We can see, all right, let's save ourselves some time. So I'm going to go ahead and delete this, create a new composer. It even created requirements automatically because that's also in my uh, rules for AI. Somewhere here, uh, requirements, create update requirements. So that, that actually helps. So we can see implement step one and three only. So we can do stuff like this. So this is pretty beautiful. Implement step one and three only. So we should now skip the calculus functions. Hopefully, let's see if this will work. Okay, it's doing add, subtract, multiply, and divide, and it's doing it under a class. That's it, so it did it. And we could have also said implement all steps. And it would have done that too. So this is quite powerful, as you can see. I think this is the only one that I'm using now, you see? It's now doing derivative, integral, and it's creating a class for calculus, and it should create one for a basic math operations as well. 
So this is lovely. Uh, okay, let's cancel this because we, we get the idea. So you can do this with web apps, any sort of any sort of uh, apps really, web pages, especially <laughs> using this with web pages. Let's just create a HTML. Okay, uh, some uh, single page. So we can say see general app rules, or we can we could have said general rules. So we can here then describe the general ideas about the project. For example, a single page HTML styled with Daisy UI, Tailwind, Anime JS, and CSS and J JS, let's say. And and here we can say a beautiful animated header with title Echo Hive apps. Uh, each letter rolls into existence, let's say. Let's just say this. And then here we can say, please implement this. We can say, please implement this because we only have one step, but this is to demonstrate that, okay, we can just, we don't know what else we're going to do, but we are just working on the header. So we can actually do something like this and wait till the results. Well, it is uh, creating a, a full stack app. So let's cancel that. Sometimes there can be residual memories, which is a bit problematic. Let's go ahead and check out and delete these. Single page, single page HTML website, let's say, and let's ask this again. Okay, it is still trying to use Flask, but that's fine. I don't know why it's trying to do that exactly, but we can say no backend. So we can actually iteratively fix the situation and then continue. Yeah, so it is currently old uh, rules. Uh, so this, this can happen, I suppose, uh, because I'm running the latest update, which probably can have some simple bugs. Let me go ahead and restart the cursor real quick. Okay, uh, now it's understanding it. Let's fix this. Easy. yeah. Okay, so, so now we just have a single page website uh, custom JS or oh, it has yeah it is referred oh okay it is working but uh, the app the uh, font colors are uh, different so I mean it's, it just gets mixed up with the background color so um, we can say here make sure that font colors are different from the background. And then here in in our in the composer, we can say please update step one. So it should go ahead and do that. Okay, and also it, it, it neglected to use Daisy UI, so it's go ahead and going ahead and do that. And also it says more distinct colors between text and background. So hopefully this fixed it. Yeah, there we go. So uh, as you can see, so we can we can uh, build like this. We can also now go to second step, and we can say, uh, and we can add here header should be at the top, and in step two we can say. Uh, in information on LLMs at the center. Beautifully designed. Okay, and then now we can ask, please update and implement step two. And right after this, we can also try it with uh, Windsurf. Uh, as you can, I mean, I hope this makes it clear.
this I really believe in this and we can also create a footer this way you can actually build it step by step uh, and you can actually build it from top to bottom your websites for example that's really useful so you can take it one step at a time you can maybe go top to bottom and left to right so uh, it just makes everything easy in my mind okay let's see now what it looks like there you go so this is great fantastic so this way we can just build iteratively all right I think we understood the point. Now let's actually check out so we clear everything. Okay. And now let's just go to Windsurf and open this project. Now, Windsurf, we're going to use Cascade, but um, Cascade doesn't have, as far as I know, cursor rules file or anything. And if this says dot cursor rules, I don't think you can attach it, so I'm just going to convert this to the cursor rules.txt. I can also just change it to rules. And here in Cascade, I'm going to say add files and select cursor rules file. And then I'm going to say implement step one, please. And so we are essentially doing work in the same way. It read the cursor rules. As you can see, it's not talking about the main center, but only talking about the rolling animation effect. So as far as the quality, they should, both Composer uh, and Cascade should be pretty similar. By the way, just like I said, the agent is using one credit per action. So, it's, so does Cascade, but Cascade seems to be maybe one quarter the price as of now. You get 1,000 steps. Uh, we can reject this command, actually. And uh, let me start it here, index.html. Here we go. It's beautiful. So, and then now we can say, please implement step two. So this way you can really see what's going on, build it iteratively. And at the end of the day, you will have created an entire description for your app. Which you can take with you anywhere, modify, reuse. So this is the beauty of it. Okay. Now let's update. I mean, refresh. Yeah, and we get, as you can see, the styling and everything is very really similar to what we built with cursor, but that's, that's just, that is because uh, we are using the same model. So I hope you found this hell helpful. Um, thank you. I would like to take a moment to talk about the benefits of becoming a patron. And some of you may know, in the last year and a half, I've spent 3,000 hours, over 300 uh, projects as a patron. You will have access to all the code files, so you can get inspiration and iterate quickly. Another benefit is that you'll have access to all my courses. And my most recent and most proud one, the 1000X Masterclass, teaching how I what I've learned on how to code fast and efficiently. Also, the Streamlit course and the Fast API course. In my Patreon, I also have tiers in which you can connect with me one on one. Check those out as well. Right now, listen to me. I've been trying to toad, and you know, like I like toading. The fact that I can code and make things happen, but how do I do it? I mean, fast with AI. I'd heard about it. It's easy. So, um, I came across Thousand X Cursor course. And that's great, you know, it just made everything super silky smooth. It just it just worked, I'm, I'm telling you. Uh, Thousand X, your coding.